So on a problem like this, students get usually pretty confused with this double angle and they don't apply it effectively. So it's really important to know when to use your identities and when not to use your identities. So like just a little quick little sidebar, if I had like the sign of, let's say, you know, two theta equals, you know, one, well, I can go ahead and solve this. And what I'll do is I'll just, you know, use substitution. I'll say, you know, let beta equal a two theta, right? And then we'll just say, well, the sign of beta is equal to one. And then we'll use the unit circle and say, when does this work? And we say beta is equal to a pi halves. Then what we do is we include back this double angle and we say two theta is equal to a pi halves. And then we divide by two and we say theta is equal to pi over four. So that works when we have an isolated double angle for a trigonometric function. But what about when we have a double angle here, but then we have a single angle here? Like how does this work? We don't want to make the silly mistake of like dividing by a sine on both sides or dividing by a theta on both sides, because those are not going to work. What we are going to want to do is get our trigonometric functions on the same side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract a sine of theta on both sides. Therefore, I have a sine of two theta minus the sine of theta equal to zero. Now, again, another mistake students will make is they'll say, well, why don't we combine these, right? Like two theta minus theta would be like a one theta. But be careful. We can kind of think of this like radicals. If I had the square root of two X minus the square root of X, well, remember when you're adding and subtracting radicals, if the only way you can do that is when the index and the radicand is exactly the same. Now, there's nothing we can do here to simplify these. And that's the exact same case here. So we're kind of stuck. We can't isolate the sine of two theta. So it's just equal to a value like I did in this previous example. And we can't combine these. So this is where it's important to know, well, I have the double angle identity that I can apply. So the sine of two theta is going to be equal to a two sine of theta cosine of theta. Now, hopefully you recognize that I have an expression minus another expression. And in these two expressions, you can see that they both share a sign. So I can divide out that common sign and put it on the outside and rewrite it as a product. Again, that process is what we call, wait for it, wait for it, factoring. Yes, you are correct. So therefore, that's going to be a two cosine of theta minus one is equal to zero. Now I have a product equal to zero. And remember, when you have a product equal to zero, you can apply the wait for it, wait for it, zero product property. So therefore, I have a sine of theta equals zero and a two cosine of theta minus one equals zero. Okay, now this one's already solved, set equal to zero, so that's fine. And then two cosine of theta minus one, I'm just using my inverse operations. I'll add one both sides and divide by two to go ahead and solve for the cosine of theta. Okay, so now we have our two equations, but again, we're not done yet. In this last example, when I had sine of beta equals one, we needed to figure out, well, what is beta? The sine of what angle, in that case, beta equaled one. Now, per the unit circle, which I didn't show you, that answer was pi halves. Now, and then in the next example, we're asking the cosine of what angle is equal to one half. And again, for the cosine, we're looking for the x coordinate for a point on the unit circle. Now, some of these you might know, and some of these you might need a little practice. So to help you out, I'll go ahead and do a quick sketch of the unit circle. Okay, so these are the four points that are gonna satisfy these solutions. Solutions here. So the sine of zero, which is this angle, you can see has a y coordinate of zero. And the sine of this angle, which ends up being pi, also has a y coordinate of zero. If we're just going to look on the unit circle, which a lot of times is going to be on the interval of zero to two pi, like for your homework or for a test or a quiz, a lot of times we'll constrict those solutions to zero to two pi. You can see that those two solutions, zero and pi, are going to satisfy this first equation. So therefore, I will go ahead and write them as zero and pi. Now, in the next two, we, we can see that the x coordinate is equal to one half for both of these angles. So again, it comes very important to know what this angle is going to be. What we can do is if you kind of think about this in terms of thirds, you can see that this angle is going to be one third of halfway around the circle, which was pi. So that's going to be one third of pi. Those angles going to be five thirds. And again, these are going to be the two angles that satisfy this equation because that is going to be the angle where the x coordinate is equal to one half. So now we can just write in those two solutions. Okay, so what about a little bonus? What about if you need a little help being able to identify all the solutions? What if your teacher is saying, hey, I don't want just the solutions on the unit circle. I want to make sure you can find all the solutions. So the last thing you can do here is look for any relationship between your solutions. Now, the fastest and easy way you can do that is take each and every one of your solutions and add two pi n to it, right? Because as long as you take a solution and you add two pi to it or subtract two pi, you're creating what we call coterminal angles. And you're always going to have all the solutions in a positive as well as a negative direction. It's a lot easier to kind of look at this visually using a graph. You can also look at this angle and see, well, if this angle satisfies this equation and I add two pi to it, then that angle, whatever that is, seven pi over three, is also going to satisfy the equation. So you can keep on adding or also subtracting two pi and you're going to keep on getting the same angle that satisfies the equation. However, what I want you to do is look for any relationships that you see between your solutions. One thing I do see is all three of these solutions, all three of these solutions look like they are two thirds from each other. So therefore, if I took my first solution, let's say theta is equal to a pi over three and I added a two pi over three, 
3, where's that going to take me? That's going to take me to the solution. And if I add 2 pi over 3 again, that's going to take me to the solution. If I add 2 pi over 3 again, it's going to take me to the solution. If I keep on adding 2 pi over 3, it's going to take me to all these solutions. So I can do that infinite many times. Now to represent infinite many times, I'm going to use n, which can represent any integer. And again, when it's any integer, it can be positive or negative, meaning we could also go in the negative direction. But again, subtracting 2 pi n is still going to take you to another solution. Now, the other solution we have here is going to be 0. And since these all these other solutions are taken care of, then I'm just going to go 0 plus a 2 pi n. Same thing. I'm just going to keep on adding or subtracting 2 pi, which again, I could also just rewrite that as a 2 pi n. Well, let's just say equal a 2 pi n. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you want more examples of solving trigonometric equations, go ahead and check out the examples and reference materials I have for you down below, or check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.